We're madly trying to get our trailer loaded up because we're going camping. And in this video, we're also gonna be taking a whole bunch of food that we raise here on our homestead to cook at the campsite. This is the trailer that we use for our hay barn. In the winter, I go and get a load of hay, then park it and use it out of it because I don't really have space in my barn for hay. This is also our camping trailer. So I built some bunk beds that just come apart with some bolts and that's what we sleep on. And we can just load everything up. We got a late start getting our trailer loaded because if you remember in our last video, we took our broiler chickens in to get processed. Well, this is the day after that and our trailer had to be left at the processor overnight. By the time we got everything loaded and drove to our campsite, we were losing daylight fast. We quickly got unloaded and set up. It was getting too late and too dark to get any real video. So we got a fire started and had ourselves some hot dogs and marshmallows and went to bed because we're more than farmers. Just got back from doing the chores. Got to go home and do the chores even while we're camping. First thing I need is my coffee. Cody is heating up water for coffee and tea and I'm starting the breakfast prep. This morning we're gonna have hash browns and some homemade bread, some homemade sourdough bread with butter and jam and then some sausage. It's mock sausage. I added sausage seasonings to some of our own hamburgers. Those potatoes are about as fresh as they can get, huh? Yes, we dug these about like what, two days ago? They make the best hash browns. While the water's heating, I want this pan heating also, so we can start making our hash browns pretty soon. We're gonna have to make them in a few different batches because we're gonna make a lot, and this pan isn't terribly big. When we're camping, I do miss my espresso machine, but this makes some pretty decent coffee. We bring our own cream from our cow. Do a little pour over. This is the simplest way that I've found to make coffee while we're camping. This pour over doesn't need any filters or anything, stainless steel, easy to just rinse out when we're done. When you think of cooking homegrown food, it all often is like overwhelming for a lot of people and you think you gotta have all the things and big kitchen and everything like that. And to a certain extent, sometimes that is the truth, but it's amazing what you can do even on a camping trip with some simple foods. This is homemade bread. We've got our butter that we made and our homemade raspberry jam. There you go. Definitely not a latte, but it's <laughs> good. First round of hash browns coming up. I've got some tallow going in this pan here. This is beef, not sausage but I seasoned it with salt and pepper, fennel, um, some basil, Italian seasoning, I think a little bit of liquid smoke and smoked paprika, just some really nice sausage flavors. The secret to yummy, crispy hash browns is lots of butter and then making them really thin. Like you want a really thin layer of the raw potatoes in order for them to get cooked and crispy all the way through. Ouch. Ow. All right, you guys can start getting yourself some hash browns and then come over here and I'll put a sausage on your plate and you guys can start eating while we finish cooking, okay? Michelle made the best barbecue sauce this year, smoky barbecue sauce, and she's gonna leave a recipe card in the description that you can download and make yourself. To round out our breakfast, we're gonna have toast with butter and jam. Eden was too impatient, so she got hers not being toasted, but this is gonna be extra good. This is strawberry rhubarb jam, strawberries and rhubarb from the garden. Here you go, babe. Thank you. After breakfast, we set off for an adventure. We'll get back to the food in a bit. When we look back on the beginnings of our homestead, at the time when we were constantly on the go, trying to get it all done, we see how even though we were working to build something for our family, we ended up neglecting our family in the process. Even though that still happens sometimes, we make it a priority to just spend time having fun as a family. I believe that homesteading is a really good thing, but it's not something worth sacrificing your family for. Can I get some of that chocolate milk? Yes, sir. All right. Let's see if it measures up. It's pretty good. Not as good as mine, but it's good. 
We definitely do want to be as self-sufficient and self-sustaining as possible and rely on the grocery store as little as possible. But here and there, using the grocery store as a convenience, I think is not a bad thing. Even in our snacking, we still brought things from the homestead. We've got cucumbers, chocolate milk, homemade mayo, things like that that I threw in. So the truth is, is that the last few days I've had a sick toddler and it's made for some really stressful, some really stressful and busy days. It doesn't have to be all or nothing when it comes to homesteading. If there's days where you just can't do it, there is no shame, there's no guilt in buying some things from the grocery store. If the bulk of your diet is really good, I think it's great to just shame-free, guilt-free, be okay with buying some things from the grocery store to save your sanity. Somebody local that watches our videos uh, saw that we were struggling with our cucumbers. So as you guys can see, my cucumbers died. And they gave us a bunch, so thank you for that. Also, while we're on the topic of thanking people, thank you Truett for my shirt. I love it. And now it's off for another adventure before we make our supper. But maybe we should have checked the weather before we left. It's just about time to start making supper, but it looks like it could rain. We might even get stuck in these woods in the rain. We're not sure. So we weren't sure if we wanted to start with a campfire and everything if it's about to rain. So I'm not sure what we're going to do. So I really don't want to get stuck frying stuff up in the middle of a rainstorm. We just decided if life gives us lemons, we'll eat ice cream. <laughs> we don't really have a lot of space to all huddle in a trailer if it does start raining and it's kind of stuck in there. So we might end up going to an ice cream shop if it does pour down rain. Might not be able to tell, but the sky is pretty blue. It looks like the rain passed, which is a good thing because we can make supper. But I was kind of hoping we'd go get ice cream. Instead, we're gonna make our supper now. We are gonna have corn on the cob grilled over the fire. We're gonna have baked potatoes down in the fire. And what else are we having, babe? Sweet corn, baked potatoes, and chicken strips. Chicken strips. Oh, and then baked apples. And baked, baked apples. So first we got to get this fire going. The reason we waited for the fire, it should have been done earlier, but we thought it was going to rain and we didn't want the rain putting on our fire because to be honest, neither me nor Shelly are very good fire builders. So we would have went to all that work building it and then it would have got rained on. I'm wrapping these potatoes in tin foil and we're going to put those in the coals. And then this corn, we're going to grill directly over the fire, like on a, a grilling rack type of thing. It actually did start raining a little bit, but thankfully it wasn't enough to put the fire out. Fire! <laughs> fire starter at Home Depot. I have finally got a pretty good fire going on here. I'm gonna spread those logs out. We're gonna pop those potatoes on there. I think the potatoes are gonna take the longest of anything. So we'll put the potatoes in first. And after a little while, we'll put the corn on top on the grill. But while these are baking, Michelle is going to actually shell some popcorn. We brought our own popcorn from our garden that she's gonna shell and we're gonna pop over the fire later tonight. So this little guy is called a little stripper. It's actually meant for like larger heads of dent corn. But since these are ladyfinger, it's a little bit small, but it's much better than doing it with your thumb and like rubbing your thumb raw. So you just kind of make do. We like to let our kids have a s'more too when we're camping, just simply because it's a treat and it's just, it's just part of camping. But for myself, I don't love all of the sugar. And so it's really fun to be able to make something over the campfire in the evening that I can enjoy with them. She's just a goody two-shoes. These should be about halfway done now, so I'm going to flip them over. Those coals are pretty hot. While these potatoes are finishing up on here, we're gonna start roasting this corn. And while this corn's roasting, Michelle needs to start making the chicken. I think this corn's not gonna take very long. I marinated some of our homegrown chicken breast with basil from the garden. I think these things are going pretty fast. That one needs to be flipped. All right, I'm ready to get these potatoes off of here. They should be done, and I want them to have a little bit of time to cool off before we eat. 
Ah, oh, these are gonna be good with that roasted corn. And I got a bite of that chicken. That chicken is delicious. All right. Let's cut one open and see how it looks. Too hot, too hot. It's supposed to get kind of like crispy on the outside and then we'll see what it looks like on the inside. Oh, that is soft. That's good. So it's like all crispy right around the edges, but the inside is just like butter smooth soft. Mmm, that's really yummy. Everything's getting done. Pretty sure it's time to get this corn over here. Some of it's burnt. It's all right. Chicken's getting done over there. I think those potatoes should be done now. So we are ready to eat. I just know that somebody's gonna come in the comments and complain about us using paper plates and tin foil. But at least notice we brought our own silverware, okay? <laughs> Who wants corn on the cob? Me! Me. Give that a try, Cade. You may have heard in one of our recent videos, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with corn on the cob. I do like the taste of it and everything. I just don't like that butter flavor that gets stuck on your upper lip. <laughs> Gotta smell it for like days, it seems like. That's good. Mmm, that's good. That there we go. Looked good even when you were cutting into yeah. it. Take a bite and tell me how it tastes. Very good. It's like really like powdery and soft. More so than like like if you bake a potato in the oven, it's more like solid inside. This is like fluffy. I don't really know how to explain it. Wanna brag on your own chicken? The marinade is like soaked all the way through. I don't usually marinate chicken because I don't think that far ahead. It's really good. What you doing, babe? I am going to make some baked apples. We have an old apple tree along our driveway and our kids have been bringing in these buckets of apples. And so I told them that if they cut them up, we'll make some baked apples while we're camping. I just have some butter in here and I'm gonna put in some maple syrup and we're just gonna let them slowly cook. I was gonna bring cinnamon and I forgot. They'll be good anyways. Oh, that's awesome. Like the caramel is like sticking to the apple. Just how I wanted it. I'm getting some for Eden. They're hot, so you gotta blow them off. I gotta blow them off. Yeah, blow them off. <laughs> and I'm gonna do something special on mine. What this needs is just a little bit of cream on top. Whipped cream would be the best, but we don't really have the means to do that right now. Is it good? <laughs> it's really good. There's no electricity at our campsite, so it just gets too dark to video when we have s'mores. But trust me, we had them. And plus, we just want some family time without a camera. Now it's morning again, time to make coffee and some breakfast. That's pretty good. We are making French toast with fresh raspberries and maple syrup and sausage patties. And we have some leftover hash browns if we want them. For French toast, you'd be using the bread you made, eggs from our chickens, yeah. milk from our cow, and maple raspberries syrup. from the garden. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm gonna do six eggs and two cups of milk. Half cup, <laughs> one cup. Looks good. Homesteading to you might be about survival, food security, or a simpler way of life. For us, it is about those things, but it's also about a life of depth and richness. There are some things that money just can't buy. You might be able to buy the same foods we grow, but you won't get the feeling you get when you see something start from a seed, care for it for months, then turn it into a delicious meal for your family to enjoy. 
Give this a try. See how the master chef did this morning. <laughs> Not really yummy. Gotta have milk with French toast. We don't own thousands of acres, set our tractor to a GPS, then sell a commodity to try to make as much money as possible to live as wealthy as possible. Of course, we want to make money too, but we live for the experiences in life. That's what makes us more than farmers. We brought you along to show you the food we made from our homestead while we were out on an adventure. And that was the last of the food. So if you want to keep watching, watch this video next where we ate only food we grew for 48 hours. It's really yummy.